Good day. This is uh, going to be uh, a difficult presentation uh, because uh, I have to put forward uh, some uh, comments that probably some people are not going to like. But uh, it is a must, uh, and my, my duty as a professional is uh, to, to mention what is good for the uh, for the uh, metropolis I work for, and uh, in this case for a man and for the Aman people. And I will have to, to mention what I have to mention. I'm going to share the screen and uh, let me do so before we start. <clears throat> mm, thank you. Well, Aman is uh, making a proposal for for the expansion of a man uh, in, in, a, in a context that I must congratulate because the, the original idea is good, but the outcome has problems that I'm going to show. The original idea comes from a World Bank uh, report of 2010, 2011, where it gave the idea of how a man should become a metropolis out of the city, the congested city that it is now. And to become that metropolis, a man had to shift to the east, to the southeast, and grow in an area that we are going to see. But um, what a man is doing is, is going to that area, but too far away, 40 kilometers away, and creating a new city, a new capital, from scratch. <clears throat> and as we're going to see, that is, that is wrong. That is not what the World Bank report uh, produced. And it uh, creates a lot of problems that an expansion does not produce. An expansion solves problems. A new city creates problems. And we are going to see that in the presentation. And as it, as it is, uh, congratulations to the officials that presented the project of expansion of a man in that area. That is a uh, to be congratulated and to be appreciated. The way it is being done is not correct, and we are going to mention uh, how to, to correct that. As I did say, uh, a man, uh, the, the, the World Bank did in 2011, uh, exactly May 31st, uh, 2011, an internal report uh, that uh, saw uh, that need for uh, mm -hmm. metropolitan expansion uh, due to the enormous growth, the explosive growth of, of a man. Uh, that report uh, was uh, made public uh, sometime later, and you can download it from that, uh, from that link. As a matter of fact, 140 professionals, officials, academics from a man have downloaded that report, have read the report, and that's the origin of that idea. Uh, presented in two, uh, 2017, so seven, seven, uh, six years later, of that expansion of a man to that area. And I must congratulate a man and the officials that presented that to do so. This is the basic um, design of that report, the proposal. And as you see, it is relatively close to the, uh, to the actual man. And it uses the, the railway, the commuter rail, as the basis, the extension of the metro and the commuter rail, which are the two elements that really are the backbone, that are the skeleton of a metropolis, uh, uses both elements to coordinate, to link the metropolis to that expansion and to make a, a single unit out of those two elements. And that is essential because it's, we are not denying our incapacity to manage a man and then building something totally different far away, unrelated to a man. No, we, we, we are not accepting our incompetence of managing a man. What we are doing is realizing that we are now in a new phase of uh, urban growth and is not anymore urban, is metropolitan. And we have to look at it in a new setting with a new vision, with a new paradigm approach. And, and that is why the difference between the two projects. This is the location of uh, the new city, the new capital of Amman, the phase one project. And as you see, it is in the right direction. It is in the south uh, uh, east or uh, east. 
Um, and, the, the look, and, and I must congratulate the officials that proposed that uh, after the, the World Bank report. But if you see this in the context of the topography of the area, uh, and I do that because we are going to compare now with the, uh, the, the, the World Bank uh, proposal, as you see in the context, this is in the right direction, but it is too far away. It is 40 kilometers away instead of eight kilometers away. And eight kilometers is very easy to, to, to provide accessibility, either by extension of the metro, eight kilometers in, in metro uh, is perfectly feasible. Uh, London, Paris, New York, uh, all the big metropolis have that kind of extension for the metro, uh, but 40 kilometers is not. And even for a railway, a commuter rail, that would be feasible, I have not seen that commuter rail proposal in the new city, it will be feasible, <clears throat> but obviously it is less effective just to have a commuter rail system providing just the centrality to the main station of the new town than to have a commuter rail that is part of the development and has many stations as you see there, connected, interconnected and, and focusing on provided access to, uh, to, uh, to central Amman, to historic Amman. I don't like to present uh, uh, slides uh, to be read, but I don't want to forget any point and I don't want to make any mistakes. So I brought this slide and uh, as this is in YouTube, you can uh, stop the, uh, the, uh, the record and, and read it and think about it rather than going in a, uh, in, in a quick presentation. So that's why I wrote it down. No? So a man, instead of making a directional center which is what, what the expansion of the metropolis requires, is doing a new town, which has a lot of problems. First of the problems that uh, if you do a new town is because you say, I am incapable of managing the actual metropolis for which I have been appointed or elected. And as I don't know how to manage the metropolis, I have to create a new paradigm of heaven uh, far away where the actual metropolitan people uh, will, will hope to live uh, but uh, but we'll stay in the in the mess that I left I leave behind. No? So it is a declaration of the acceptance of incompetence. It requires new towns require enormous investments. You have to do everything from scratch. Not only the infrastructures, not only the roads and the water and the electricity and everything, but the social facilities, the hospitals, the uh, universities, everything from scratch. Something that requires enormous amounts. Of, of, of investment, uh, and those investments, if they are do as, done as an expansion of the existing metropolis, are already in some part done, so it's much cheaper to do that expansion than to do a new town. And those new towns, like is the case of uh, uh, New Cairo, at the end is only for the formal sector, because the land, everything is controlled by the government, and obviously the government requires to be formal, everything. And, but the formal sectors in many countries is only 30% of the, t, the top GDP per capita incomes is only the wealthy people that belong to the formal sector and that can afford to be in that new town. So it is antisocial because the benefits of that investments, of those huge investments are going to benefit those formal sector. Many of those are civil servants, like is the case in New Cairo, Cairo and, but these benefits for the wealthy are being financed by the money of the public, uh, of the public funds, of the uh, public uh, national budget. And the excuse that there are uh, other investments, uh, other national, international investments and so on, it is a fake because at the end, those investments are there because the warranty and the, uh, is made by the national uh, government that, that warrants those investments, and at the end, if the thing doesn't work, uh, is the national um, government that really takes charge of those uh, of that failure and that financial failure. And this is, uh, I see that uh, Aman is is following the new Cairo model, and the new Cairo model, uh, apart from from the fifty eight billion dollars that uh, cost and invested by the, uh, built by the army, invested by the army, because 51% of uh, Egypt economy is in the, hands, in the hands of the army. Apart from that, uh, New Cairo uh, has no mass public transport. They have not thought 
of uh, the, uh, the, the train. They have not thought uh, about the metro. And it has no social accessibility. Only the people that have the car can access not only the money to buy those, those housings, the 30%, but the car have uh, accessibility. The people that do not have accessibility stay in Cairo and are still building in the wrong locations, uh, damaging the environment of the, of the River Nile uh, Delta with the land where the plots are small and they can do informal housing of those plots. So, uh, it, it, it is all those problems, sustainability, uh, social, economic, and so on. But at the end, it's as well a, a moral issue. No? The rich are running away from the poor and leaving the poor behind. And that is not the way to manage a metropolis. Obviously, Jordan, Jordan is a stable monarchy, is able to fulfill the project. We have no doubt about that. The project can be uh, produced and finalized. But in many places, the problem of new towns is that is a, a, is, is a thrown away to waste the investments that are done in those new towns. Because they are proposed and uh, initiated by a government, elected uh, democratically, and, and they have the benefits of the idea of heaven in earth, uh, let's, let's uh, uh, get away of the existing metropolis and let, let's uh, build a new one that will be perfect. And the, ben the political benefit of that is, 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 is gained by the, uh, uh, the government that makes that proposal, but the enormous investment required uh, has to be done not only by that government, but by the four or six governments following that one that have no political benefit, and they have to invest a lot of the public funds uh, national funds into that into that city, and there is a moment uh, one politician, which a different party says, if there is no political gain and uh, they are uh, requiring the investments that I have to use for any other things, I stop investing, and the uh, the new town remains idle, like uh, in the middle of the desert or the middle of nowhere, like in Nairobi. That's a good example. After ten years or fifteen years. Of a proposal of, of a new town, there is only one building, which is an official building, and roads which are empty. No? And so it's a pharaonic investment, and and at the end is a wasted money, public money that belongs to everyone and should have been used to 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 improve and to um, to manage the existing metropolis. A directional centrality is different because it's close to the metropolis. It helps to decongest. Is linked. It's easy and cheap to do this public transport to link the two things together. And, and so it decongests the city because it uncorks the pressure of the city in one direction. It takes the cork out. And so the liquid goes there and, and you have an expansion that, that takes away the congestion of the city. And you know, Tune Town is too far away, 40 kilometers away. It does not. The city remains congested uh, with the people that cannot run away. Access, uh, in that directional centrality, accessibility to all classes, because you are able to make mass public transport, you are able to make train and metro, and you can introduce a public uh, public price uh, approach. So everyone will be able to take that uh, that uh, uh, public mass transport, and it is a short distance, so it is feasible, and the investment of public transport is feasible. And then you have social housing provision. Uh, because those people that are going to live in those houses have their jobs in the existing metropolis, and they cannot live 40, 40 kilometers away without a car to, to get to your job. If you get the, jo the, the housing close to the job and you provide that mass public transport, you, you have these people, the ones in real need, uh, that will benefit from that uh, uh, metropolitan expansion of uh, directional centrality. So, the, the actual proposal is mislocated and can shift what should be a success into a failure. Um, maybe uh, not a financial failure if uh, Jordan is able to invest, invest, invest for 30 years. Generally, the return of new towns, the uh, zero, the, the, the black numbers instead of the red numbers, come after 30 and 40 years. So maybe for 40 years, Jordan is going to be able, as I mentioned, because it has a stable monarchy and a stable political system, uh, will be able to invest. But um, uh, obviously, uh, to have an investment that only gives returns in 40 years is the wrong investment. The right investments are the ones that 
have returns of, of 11 years, 12 years, or, or even less. No? So let's look at why the difference, why uh, a directional centrality is necessary, and that is the right approach. So congratulations for the idea of moving east, uh, southeast, and let's uh, correct the, the approach and, and take it uh, closer to, um, to Amman. Amman is growing very fast. This is part of that report uh, of 10 years ago. Maybe the figures are not anymore the, exactly the same, but, uh, but uh, if there is a difference, uh, please do, do the new calculations and let's look at them. No? Uh, from what uh, Amman is growing, uh, you need 75,000 dwellings every year because you have 300,000 inhabitants every year. <coughs> and to a, a, a reasonable um, uh, density, a density that will be efficient, sustainable, efficient, and socially, uh, obtain uh, uh, equitable you you will need 20 square you need every year 20 square kilometers you need that since 10 years ago where the report was done but you you still need 20 uh, uh, square kilometers every year and that is a huge that is that square of uh, four uh, 4.5 kilometers by 4.5 kilometers that we are going to use in the following maps let's look at the structure of of uh, of a man. A man is obviously in the edge of, of, a, of a ridge of mountains which are parallel to the Jordan Valley. So that is the main directionality of the metropolis. And then there are two other directionalities in, in a man, in the, the two directions of the country of Jordan. And we are going to see how those two other secondary directionalities work and determine the future of a man of, of a man as part of the DNA, the metropolitan DNA, the structure of, of the genetics of a man. No? This is the areas of a man. A man has been built when it was a small city in a, in a very beautiful area with hills and, and with valleys and with water and so on. But it's different when you are a city of 50,000 than when you are a city of 5 million. So uh, you have multiplied by 100 and the approach, the density, the scale is completely different. So uh, these three uh, directionalities are there. And this is the, the valley of the limit of a man where the, as a matter of fact, the train goes this brown uh, um, uh, dotted line. No? So a man, the hills, the desert and the barrier of, of the hills, which are uh, east to, of the train that is looking for, uh, goes through that valley. Uh, but but those hills are uh, cutting a man from the expansion plane of the desert that now it has to jump and it has jumped both by the new town approach and both by the uh, metropolitan expansion approach. Out of these four areas of a man, you have uh, qu diff uh, different qualities of those areas. Uh, the north has environmental value. The, uh, the West has topographical inadequacy because it's a very uh, hilly and, 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 and difficult topography. The South has agricultural value, so it should be preserved. So the right expansion, and that's why the World Bank report and uh, the, the, uh, the new town proposal is there. In the, the real potential for expansion is to the East, so we do all agree. When we look at a smaller scale and we see this um, map of central Amman, we see that it has a very characteristic topography. It has this valley where the train goes, the rail tracks go, and then you have the affluence to that valley that provides some hilly areas that have been designed, urban design, the streets and, and the accessibility has been designed uh, in those uh, plateaus uh, between the, the cliffs uh, that separate uh, one valley from the other. It has a, a, an urban intelligent setting and approach. No? When we see already to the, to the expanded um, um, a man, not anymore the, the small uh, city, but the large metropolis that has not yet realized it is a metropolis and has to manage itself, not as an urban growth uh, approach, but a metropolitan setting, a metropolitan structure. When you see this, you see that it has had a sh already a shift of, of uh, access, no? This central axe of the country, of the Jordan River, of the ridge of the mountains and so on, which is a, an axis, has shifted to the blue line and then should shift again mm -hmm. to the east, which is 
as we mentioned, the area of expansion of a map. So you see this uh, axis, uh, instead of growing to the, to the west, to the yellow line, uh, we should uh, grow to the, to, the, uh, to the east, the brown line, and that has been well understood, thanks, uh, because in, uh, that, that was the main proposal of uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the report uh, 10 years ago. So we have to shift to the, to the desert, and that is sure, and that is well done in, in Cairo, we did as well uh, 10 years ago a report for Cairo, and that was a proposal, and though mm -hmm. Cairo had had uh, those discussions uh, long ago. And that is exactly the way uh, a man should grow. From, there has already been, there has already been some urban plans uh, uh, some time ago that realized that and, and presented the growth of a man in that direction. Mm -hmm. The problem with those urban plans is that they did not realize that the metropolis does not grow round. Um, the, 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 the ring rows and the beltways and so on only congest more and more the metropolis because they reinforce the centrality where everyone has to go. And you can do seven uh, ring rows and your metropolis will be even more congested every time. So uh, that, that is something that we know for 30, 40 years already, but there are still professionals that uh, are obsolete and are still thinking about this uh, ring road system. And obviously the, uh, the uh, uh, urban plan that was done for a man some time ago, I don't know exactly the date, uh, did that mistake. And as you see uh, to the left, the uh, red ring roads uh, that should not be, uh, one of them has been produced, but uh, should not be promoted. And you have these axes that have to be articulated in a different way. So the way is the one we are going to show. No? A man has to go to the east, southeast, and, and that is obvious, and that has been uh, taken uh, by the promoters of the uh, new Amman proposal, and uh, that, that is good, and I congratulate that. So the, the growth expansion is in the right direction, so far so good, but, but we must understand the dynamics of a metropolis. It's not anymore a big city, it's a metropolis. And we have to manage the next steps forward in the right way, in the right direction. No? And uh, we can not uh, try to solve the problems with the instruments that have created those problems. That was a sentence from Albert Einstein. No, So we have to understand the new paradigms of what a metropolis is to, to build up. And a metropolis is a, is a new dimension. You have the different scales of uh, physical intervention, spatial intervention. You have architecture, you have urban design, you have uh, town planning or urban planning, you have metropolitan planning and so on and so on. And as you see, every time you go from one scale to the other, you, you move uh, by power of 10. So if you go from a scale of 150 to 1,500 to 1,500 to 150,000. So from urban approach, urbanism, which is the approach of urban to a metropolitan planning, is a new scale and the discipline and the knowledge and the paradigms are different as the same way as architecture is different from urban design and urban design is different from, from urbanism, urban planning, the metropolitan planning is different and you cannot use the paradigms of uh, city planning of urban planning to solve uh, the, 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 paradigm, the, the elements of a metropolis. And when you do a new town, you, are, you, 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 sh you show that you are unable to manage a metropolis, and then what you do is you reproduce a city, uh, hoping that that city will not be as a mess as the one you are leaving behind. And that paradigms uh, are affect not only the, the general vision of the structure of the metropolis, but every one of the sectors. And this is, for instance, the, the scales into the transport sector, and you have the different modes of, of transport, and each mode is perfect. Uh, uh, planes and bicycles are both, per are both perfect. But you don't go from Amman to Paris in bicycle, and you don't go from, uh, from uh, to buy your, your bread or your butter uh, uh, in a plane. So uh, the, the, the different modes have the different scales, and this is the scales of a metropolis uh, from the international scale, which is obviously the plane, to the very local scale, which is walking, non-motorized transport, and, and bicycles and so on. And in the middle, you have the urban scale, which is the buses, and you have the metropolitan scale, which is not anymore the buses, which is not anymore the BRTs, which is the, the metro, the long range metro or the commuter train. 
And that is what we have to understand that a metropolis has to be running a different approach with a different modes of transport, with a different approach to environment, to social, to economic, to everything. But we have no time, we have to go uh, quick because we, we don't want to make this uh, too long. Uh, so, so you have the clear ideas of how to, to correct the things which have to be corrected right now. So this is the, um, the red line is the uh, uh, rail uh, of, of uh, a man, and it has not been used as a metropolitan uh, mode of transport. And it has to, because that is the main metropolitan mode of transport. You should uh, create urban centralities in the different stations, so you already have there a system that can be improved and that can provide uh, in the range of uh, 600,000 uh, uh, voyages, passengers per day. So you already have a system there to decongest um, a man in, along that line with urban centralities. And that is the way London has been doing since 1847. Uh, Paris, uh, New York, Chicago, Madrid, all the big metropolis that work in the world, uh, you take uh, 30 to 40 minutes to get to your job and you have those modes of transport that allow you to make uh, 50 kilometers, 40 kilometers uh, to get to your job. So this is already a proposal. And what you have done, and it's, it's right, is the metro lines. You have the three metro lines that follow the, the lines uh, of the national structure and then the, the metropolitan structure. You remember the red uh, vertical line and the two other lines. So you have those three uh, lines, but you have to promote the, the what, what here is the orange line, which is the, the line that goes to the east to provide access to this new centrality, directional centrality, directional centrality. And that is one of the objects of, of that uh, creation of that uncorking of, of the metropolis. So you see beyond those hills that uh, are beyond the, 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 at the east of a man, you, you can create that new centrality by expanding that metro line and by, or by taking it by, by, by commuter train, that will be better when, once you have the, the money to produce that expansion of the commuter train uh, rather than the metro. It can be very similar. If the metro doesn't have to go underground, if it goes overground, it can be very similar to, to a commuter train. As a matter of fact, in Washington, D.C., you have the metro under the city and it goes to the outskirts. The metro goes overground and expands into the metropolis and the combination of the two systems is available and possible. And I, I suggest, um, we suggest that kind of approach. And you have that kind of uh, yellow line directionality, which is really the, the growth of uh, of a man should go into that direction with that pattern, which is not anymore round, which is reticular, because the reticular has always been the right pattern to manage the cities since, uh, since Greek times for us uh, Westerners, but um, it, it has been all the cultures, the Mayas, the Aztecs, the Chinese, all the cultures have used the, the, um, the reticular to, to, to grow um, and expand their cities. The difference is the scale of that reticulum. In Greece, it was 30 meters. In, in, uh, in the 19th century, it was 120 meters. And now it's really four kilometers, which is the same time you spend by when you walk or you uh, take a horse or you take a car, uh, the time is, is, is the same. So the unit of time in a metropolis, but sorry, the unit of distance in a metropolis is not the kilometer, it is the minute. No. And, and that uh, mechanism of growth uh, in the 21st century uh, requires this kind of reticulate in a different dimension. And that's what we are going to see. So you have that, that centrality, the new centrality that you have created. You have the, the big directionality, the main directionality of the Amman metropolis. And you have the growth of those two uh, yellow dotted lines that go to the Southeast, which is the expansion area. And if you follow, 40 kilometers, you will arrive to the location of the of the new town, but uh, you should not start by the, the end because that's too far and it takes too much of an investment. You should start uh, closer to the to the actual metropolis, eight kilometers instead of 40 kilometers. So the growth of that will require the uh, articulation of the uh, of the metropolitan expansion. Uh, through uh, the, the, a new commuter train that will 
provide access to all those centralities that can be created around uh, a line. We have no time to talk about the new paradigms of, of metropolitan planning. I suggest, and I will put that at the end of the, of the video, a link to a discipline course on metropolitan management and planning that you can see in, uh, in, in YouTube and you can follow and you will understand all the elements and all the assertions that we are doing in this uh, short presentation. So you have there the capacity to expand to whatever needs. Remember that you need one of those squares, of those yellow squares, every year because those squares are 4.5 kilometers uh, wide and that is the need of land every year. So uh, it's, it's not an issue of making a new town that, as we will see, will, will, will provide land for the needs of a man for seven years. And after that, what? A new town? A new, new town uh, as large as the one that you have finished? And, and then after another seven years, a new, new, new town? No. No, you have to, to make a mechanism that will be able to absorb the needs of, of a man for the next uh, 40 years, because that is why cities like Barcelona uh, were planned in the 18, 1860s and, and still work when you really have a vision ahead and not a vision that ends up in itself and collapses at the end of the production of it. So you see each of those squares is what you need every year and you have to build up a system that will allow that, that, that build up um, uh, with, a, with an incrementalist approach. No? And then the system will grow and you will need one of those squares every year. Here it is, no? 20 square meters, uh, kilometers, land required each year. So you cannot plan with a limited of three or four of those uh, squares, because then you will be collapsed after the finishing of the project. Uh, you have to, to, to uh, have an approach, uh, an epistemological approach, uh, a methodology, methodology approach that will provide a response, not for five years, but for, for 40, 50, uh, half a century, at least. And what you're doing now, the new town that you're building is just for seven years. So, uh, as the new town was presented in November, November 17, uh, uh, and you put seven years, that, that means that in, in, in November 2000, uh, uh, 2023 or 24, uh, it should be completed, and then you should start a new new town, which is not the way to approach the future of metropolis. You have to set up a system that it will, it will, it, it will allow growth and expansion progressively without creating congestion uh, in an expansive way as, as the big metropolis of the world have, have been able to do. And what worries me is that the, the philosophy you are using for this new town is the philosophy of the, uh, of the Cairo model, of the new town model, which is the wrong philosophy by all the aspects that I have mentioned before. And really to solve a man problems, you need uh, to develop the concept of a metropolis, which is a different concept from an urban uh, approach or even an urban expansion. So really, you have to change that. And that was the difference between the, 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 the urban approach, uh, limited and collapsing in itself of the new city uh, of Amman to what uh, the World Bank report did set up in 2011. So this is the first uh, part. This is similar to the, uh, the new Amman approach, uh, but this will work and the new Amman approach uh, might only work after uh, uh, pouring a lot of finance, a lot of effort from the uh, Jordan people for years and years and years and only benefiting the wealthy 30% uh, and leaving away and leaving behind the poor people behind. So this is the, the overall project with the expansion of the train, the expansion of the metro, the location of the centralities and the creation of the land uh, necessary to respond to the uh, needs of, of a man uh, thought in, in a long term. So it is time to correct. You still have time to correct. I don't know if the investments have already been put in place or the project is being uh, designed or approved or uh, I don't know the exact situation, but you are still time to correct. 
And uh, I, I congratulate the promoters because they took the right inspiration from that World Bank report that you can download and you have the, the link uh, in the first uh, slide. Uh, but I invite the Jordan government to, to go back to that report, to understand it right, to understand the concept that we are dealing, which is not the concept of the new town, and, and, and then to correct it. Because we, we cannot have a man, um, we cannot afford a, a, a failure of a man. Uh, a man has to be the example, it has been, and it has to keep on being the example of the Middle East and Jordan with its political stability has to be the example of the, of the uh, Middle East. And we cannot afford having uh, a man uh, failing. Uh, we must have an, a man that will be a success. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope my message has been clear. You, you will be able to, uh, to, to look back at the, uh, at the um, uh, video again and again. And if there is anything which is not clear, I'm very happy to explain. I have met with uh, five or six uh, chief of governments, uh, prime ministers, presidents, chief of state. I can explain uh, with ministers. I have met with un uncountable amount of, of ministers in my uh, 40 years of already 50 years of, of work in 68 countries. So I will be very happy to, uh, to explain with details to everyone that will require it, the, the differences and the benefits and the uh, wrongdoings of every of, of these two. Uh,